<sighs> what is going on YouTube world? I'm your brother Reza and this is Care to Life. Care to Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, and all that stuff. And it's been a year already, I cannot believe it, since I've reviewed the Adidas gravel shoe. And after a year of experience with the shoe, I think I can tell you a little bit about what I think about it. Coming up next. Today's vlog, I'm gonna be talking to y'all about this gravel shoe from Adidas. Man, I cannot believe it's already been a year since I've been riding this shoe. Did an initial review about this thing. Initially, I really liked it. I also really liked the Velo Samba a lot. I liked it when I tried it on, but the love affair went away really quick, and I just recently actually sold them on eBay. So I'm gonna tell y'all about my year of riding this shoe and what I thought about it. Now, what kind of use case did I use this shoe in? I rode a mixture of asphalt and gravel and mud and construction areas and stuff like that with this boot over the year that I have owned it. And I was doing on average about 90-ish to 100 something miles a week during the summer months. So for the last like four or five months here, I was putting some serious miles on this shoe. And um, a lot of stuff happened along the way. And I guess I will, I guess, talk to y'all about that and let y'all know how I feel about this shoe. So we're going to start at the bottom of the shoe and work our way up. And yeah, I think that's a good way for me to do this review because there's so much to go over. So the bottom of this shoe. The bottom of the shoe has a ton of grip as you can see. It has these plastic uh, pieces in the front of the shoe and in the rear of the shoe at the heel. The way that the bottom of this shoe is made is kind of like rounded. So to, I guess to make it easier for you to walk in it, even though the sole is very, very stiff and not flexible at all. Now that stiffness translates to pretty good power delivery when you're cranking down on the crank. You don't feel any like bending or anything of the shoe. But the uh, drawback to that stiffness is that I get, well, a couple things. Number one, this part right here can get really, really slippery. And I learned the hard way that if you're not clipped in properly and it slips, you're going to hit your leg really hard on your crank uh, pedal, or your pedals rather if you uh, slip and you're not clipped in completely on this bottom part right here on the bottom part of the shoe. Um, these little pads, they do give it enough grip to do some walking. I mean, I, the furthest I ever had to walk in these was approximately three miles, which was a really long walk because I had a bike malfunction. I didn't have the tools to fix it, and I had to get back. And it was, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was not the worst thing to walk in. But I mean, it's not like walking in sneakers, obviously. And on the topic of walking, the Velo Samba that I got rid of wasn't really that good to walk in either. But that's another story. So moving up from the sole, oh, and these little pegs. As you can see, some of these little uh, pegs have broken off and worn off from you know my time using these, because I use these very hard, walking on all kinds of surfaces. And yes, yeah, some of them broke, but for the most part, it's still intact. This part right here, massive issue though. Um, so moving up from the sole and talking about the upper of this shoe, this upper is a synthetic upper from what I understand. And for the most part, it has done a very good job um, of keeping debris and water and stuff like that out of the boot. Now, as you can see, when you look around the boot, it has also done a good job of not really showing too much wear. It's, uh, if I were to wash this boot off, it would look relatively brand new, to be honest with you. There are very few defects or anything really wrong with this boot from uh, me using it. Now, on one of them, I'm not sure which one it is, I think it's, yeah, it's that one right there that's on the pedestal. This little uh, bump strip right here, this little suede strip, is kind of starting to separate on the toe. Um, and then on one of them, I actually have, oh, you can see it right here, where I guess from hitting, I don't know if it's to hitting the crank arms or hitting the tire or something like that, that material has gotten some scuffs on it and it took the paint off. So it's a little white. But other than that, from like abrasion issues, abrasion issues, but from abrasion, from like just regular use, the upper of the shoe is pretty much in pretty good condition. Now, because this upper is pretty darn water resistant, it's not the most breathable upper in the world. If you're riding around your gravel trail and water happens to get up and over this lower part of the upper into this uh, uh, stretchy sock material right here, your feet are gonna be wet and they are going to stay wet. There's no way for this shoe to drain properly. You can like do everything you want I mean, a very small amount 
may drain out through the bottom but every time that i've been in a rainstorm or went through like really really deep mud or ruts or anything like that all the water that came up over this part right here got into the actual shoe and stayed into the <laughs> and stayed in the shoe until the end of my ride which was extremely annoying on a lot of use cases and uh sweat also if you sweat a lot you, this this is not really the shoe for you. I think that this shoe is uh, doesn't really breathe that good for a person with really really sweaty feet. My feet aren't that sweaty, so it wasn't really that much of a problem. But rain, big problem. And uh, while I'm talking about this little sock area up here, this actually works really good at keeping like debris and rocks and gravel and stuff like that out of the boot when you're riding. But um, I never had anything go over the top of this outside of water, and that's because this is not water resistant at all. Water goes through the, or straight through this and right into the boot. But gravel, sand, dust, and stuff like that does not necessarily go through this. And this part up here has held up considerably well considering its age and the amount of usage that I got out of it. I don't have any loose threads on either of the boots. You can see across the top. And um, yeah, everything is mechanically pretty sound up here. Oh, I forgot about the lacing system. Let me talk about the lacing system real quick. So this lacing system real quick, when you lace the front of the uh, shoe, you can, uh, when, when, you lace the front of the shoe, when you lace the shoe up, it has this little uh, elastic strap right here to keep your shoelaces in place when you're riding and keep them out of your crank. And for the most part, it has worked fine. Like I haven't had any issues with the laces ever coming out or like getting caught in the chain or anything like that. So that has worked pretty darn good. And uh, yeah, now that we've gone from the bottom to the top of the shoe, let's talk about comfort real quick. So these are the most comfortable cycling shoes I've ever owned and I haven't owned very many, so I'm not even gonna lie to you. Um, up until the point where I tried this new specialized shoe on the other day in the bike shop and I can't remember the name of it, but I'll overlay it somewhere across my face right now. Um, and that was a lot more comfortable than this and now I feel like that was because of this flex zone that shoe had and the way that the shoe was uh, The last that, that shoe was made on felt a bit wider than this one This one right here when I'm on this for I don't know when I'm riding for like two hours I start noticing that my feet tend to slide towards the front of this shoe and then my toes are like cramped in like that instead of like out so I have to like you know think in my head push your shoes back push it not shoes push your feet back while you're cranking down and you know as you're going through the pedal stroke to be pressing down and not forward I have to actively think about that when I'm riding in these shoes because if I don't my toes go forward and then they feel cramped in the front of the shoe outside of my toes feeling cramped in these shoes I don't really have any other issues as far as comfort with these they're very comfortable unless your feet are really sweaty and they get or they get wet and they have actually gone the distance and done pretty good for what I have needed out of them so these shoes are still available on the Adidas website and they have like a whole bunch of colors and stuff now so I would recommend these shoes if they're on sale and if you really really like the design because I feel like the look of this shoe is the best thing about this shoe uh, by far I mean the functionality is good I would give it a probably like a B minus or a C plus as far as functionality but as far as looks, I mean, these things, they, in my opinion, they just look mega. They're like A+. Plus. So if looks are more important than functionality to you, definitely get the Adidas gravel shoe. It's not a horrible bike shoe. It's pretty comfortable. But if you got sweaty feet or if it rains a lot, these things do not drain. And I actually did think about putting some drain holes down here, but I didn't want to compromise the integrity of this structure. So I'm your brother Reza. This is Carrot T Life. Carrot T Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, and all that. And uh, sorry that we haven't been putting out vlogs as much as we normally would, but it's been very busy with the baby. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get back on a nice regular schedule. So I'll see you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.